Welcome to Soul Bodied. This is your host, Anna Kinkela. This is a sacred space where we hold conversations on what it means to honor the fullness of our humanity and the expansiveness of our divinity. In this space, we embrace the complexities that are inherent in all of our experiences, welcoming in the messiness of all that we are as a pathway to knowing, embracing, and embodying the fullest expression of our soul in the human realm. We talk about leadership, embodiment, social change, psychology, spirituality, conscious business, quantum creation, politics, nature, movement and the body, relationships, building communities of true connection, and anything else that guides us deeper into leading from a place of wholeness and belonging within ourselves and with each other. Hello everyone and welcome back to Soul Bodied. This is your host, Anna Kinkela, and this week's episode is all about the power of receiving in our life and in our business. We don't spend enough time talking about receiving. Our ability to receive, like fully receive something in our lives, something in our business, is literally the channel through which all of our desires come into our world. We spend so much time focusing on external action to get to where we want to be, right? This kind of achievement-based mindset. You know, if I do X, Y, and Z, then I will produce this kind of result. And while action steps, of course, are super important in this dynamic and they have to be there, um, energetically, what's also playing out underneath the surface is, you know, a lot of blocks to us actually being able to receive what we want to receive. If we don't believe that we are worthy of receiving something, if we have a lot of guilt and shame about receiving, if we don't feel like we can actually hold everything that we want to get in our life and in our business, then in an energetic sense, it's going to be really difficult for us to receive that, right? The energy of who we are being is in match to what we are seeing in our external environment. And so there's this real invitation to look at what is our relationship with receiving, right? How do I feel about receiving? Am I someone who readily accepts compliments and welcomes them? Or am I someone who shies away from them and feels embarrassed and resistant to being acknowledged, right? Am I someone who speaks up for what I need, Or do I shrink away and take care of everything by myself because it's hard for me to ask for support? Am I someone who says yes when I feel a yes in my body? Or does it sometimes feel really hard for me to say yes because I'm thinking about what the other person is going to think of me or I'm feeling a lot of guilt and shame about saying yes to my desires um, because, you know, of kids or partner or some other reason? Do I say no when I really feel a full body no? Or, you know, am I taking on things, tasks, giving of myself to other people when it doesn't actually feel good to me, right? All of this comes into play when we talk about the energy of receiving, because if we're giving away a lot to other people and to other things, and we're holding a lot, then energetically, there's very little space for us to receive. We don't have room in our bodies. We don't have room in our energetic containers, 
And if we're not saying yes, when our body is communicating a full body yes, then we are not being clear with our communication with the universe, right? We might be asking for these things from the universe, like more money or, you know, a a certain kind of job or a partner. But at the same time, through our action and our energy, we are saying no to the places where the universe is leading us, which often it communicates through our body, right? And we're saying no to the things that are a yes in our experience. And there's a lot of energetic confusion that happens there, right? A lot of inconsistency. And so your ability to be able to welcome in what is being offered to you in the moment, right? What the universe is bringing to you. If you don't say yes to it when it shows up, then there's this sense of disconnect with the universe where it's like, okay, I'm giving her these things. I'm giving her the next step to her receiving her desires, but she's communicating no to me, even though she's asking for it. So there's a lot of confusion there, right? There's kind of like this disconnect between what we want in our heads and then what our programming allows us to accept into our energy field. And this does have a lot to do with programming, right? People aren't purposefully saying no when they really want to say yes. It's because there's all of these uncomfortable emotions that are associated with yes, that are associated with receiving, that are associated with asking for support. So this is about actually clearing up our energy in order for the energy to just start flowing to us more naturally. And in order for you to start really meeting the universe energetically with where you desire to go. When it comes to our internal work, looking at the blocks to receiving is probably one of the most overlooked components of internal work. In other words, you know, I have a lot of clients who have done shadow work prior to working with me and, you know, they focused maybe on resolving beliefs that they have that have been, um, a product of like trauma that they've experienced or, you know, looking at why it's hard for them to be seen because of experiences that they had very early on in life. And all of that's really important, right? And it's a component of the internal work. But when it comes to looking at how, how willing am I to receive what I really want, right? We don't often look there and, I find that it's because there's a certain level of comfort in being in some of these shadow places. Most of the women that I've worked with um, really come to me after like years of already doing personal development work. And the reason they come to me is because they've had all these blocks for a really long time. And they feel like despite all the internal work that they've done, they haven't been really able to shift out of some of the stories that they've been playing out in their mind. And there's this level of comfort with doing shadow work that often reinforces this belief that somehow we are broken, right? We're constantly in the work and we're constantly feeling like we need to do more in order to get there, wherever there is, in order to get to a place where we're somehow showing up perfectly. And of course that never happens, right? We're always going to have stories that come up and it's just part of being human. It's part of the process. And so we spend a lot of time focusing on the past in order to shift what's happening in the present moment, but we don't spend enough time looking at if I were to receive all of the things that I really want to receive, what really comes up for me in that space? Is it fear? Is it guilt? Is it shame? What's really there for me? And, you know, I find that one of the reasons we actually don't look at this a lot is because we have so many unconscious blocks to receiving. So we don't even think to look there. Yeah. We're so used to functioning at the receiving level that we are at now that we don't even look at the level of receiving the woman that we are becoming is at receiving desiring, wanting, asking for what we want is such a taboo subject specifically for women. Women are programmed and conditioned as caretakers. And as caretakers, 
we learn to hold a lot and we learn not to ask for a lot because we're often multitasking. We're emotionally holding space. We're doing a lot of tasks. We're all the things to all the people. And this is embedded not only within us in society currently, but it's also part of our ancestral line, right? That generations of women who have come before us have held a lot held a lot of trauma, held a lot for partners, for children, um, for communities in general. And so this kind of energy and this kind of programming is really, really embedded in our core. And last week when I talked about the nice girl paradigm, all of that factors into that, right? And it's why a lot of women have so much trouble with saying yes to things, saying yes to their desires and even talking about their desires because we're not taught to think about that. I didn't actually even think about my own desires until... I was in my late twenties, like the concept of desire and me living like this turned on life, this life that feels lush and abundant in all the ways wasn't a concept for me until I did did desire map planning through Danielle Laporte, right? Until I discovered her and started tuning into what are my desires? How do I really want to live individually versus what I've maybe been told by the collective of how I should be in the world? And so um, for many of us, it might be a completely new concept for others. It might be something that we're really familiar with and we've done some work on tuning into our desires. And yet there's still so much there that keeps us from fully receiving what we want because there are so many blocks to receiving pleasure and desire is all about pleasure. And if you think about, you know, how you are in relationship with pleasure in your life, whether that's in the bedroom or in our relationships, when we ask or don't ask for support. Or if it's just in our ability to slow down and enjoy our food or go shopping and buy ourselves something that we really want versus something that we need, right? How willing are we to step into the zone of pleasure and how much guilt and shame is there when we do that? Because it's not a question of whether it shows up, but it's how much of it shows up and how do we work through it when it does show up in the space, There are also so many beliefs around, did I earn this, right? It's a common thing that we just say in our culture. Well, I didn't earn this break or I didn't earn this necklace that I wanted to buy for myself. I didn't work hard enough, right? And so that even of itself, this need for us to produce and to measure our worthiness through what we produce as a way to Um, give ourselves permission to receive is something I hear so often. And the question I always ask in the space is, when are you going to be good enough? What do you have to do in order to be worthy enough to actually receive what you desire? And the answer is, you are worthy right in this moment. You don't have to produce more. You don't have to be more. You simply need to be willing and open to receiving right now as you are and asking for what you really want and need. And so the invitation here is yes, for you to understand that intellectually, but it's also for you to feel that in your body, right? To feel that you are worthy to receive right now without doing an ounce more of work, whether that's like work in your business externally, or whether that's more internal work that right now you are whole and you are capable and worthy of receiving everything that you want in this very moment. And that is an energetic space that welcomes what you really want for yourself in. I think on a very fundamental level, and this is a really important piece, is that oftentimes we just need to do some work around tuning into what it is that we really desire. I know for myself, I found that for a long time, I was holding on to things that I thought intellectually I desired 
because they had been programmed into me to desire them. Right. So, you know, I went into a traditional career. I bought a house. I got married, like all of those things that I was supposed to want. And that at the time seemed like I wanted them. But when I asked myself the deeper question, when I really tuned into the feelings that were coming up for me as I was receiving some of these things in my life, where, you know, my response to me receiving those things was actually contracted. Like I, I wasn't as excited as I should have been, right? Or as I thought I might be. And then I started to look a little bit deeper within myself. And I really started to ask myself the question, is this my desire or is this someone else's desire that I have um, adapted into my life because I thought that I should want to have this? And I think that this is a really important distinction. Sometimes the things that we say that we desire might not actually be what the core of your soul really desires. And there's a deeper discernment here for each one of us. And it's not to say that you shouldn't want a house or a marriage or a child or whatever, just because it's something that mainstream tells you that you should want. It's to say that there's an invitation for you here to do a little bit of deeper work and really tune into what does the core of me really, really want? What would turn me on? Like what would turn my body on if I received it right now? There should be some kind of bodily response there. There should be this openness that happens in your body when you think about receiving this thing, because your whole human system is reacting to that desire. And if it's not a core soul desire, then your response is probably going to be very different in your body. And so that's something to start paying attention to, right? When, when I'm feeling pleasure in my life, how does my body react? What does my body do? And when I'm experiencing something that feels like, okay, but not really it, the big it, then how is my body responding? What's my body doing? We have this one big, beautiful life and what you are receiving in your life should feel like this big, huge yes in all of the cells of your being. And I know I'm saying a lot of shoulds, and typically I would say that that's a red flag, but sometimes a should is appropriate. And, you know, I think what we're here to do in life is to really live from our soul, right? Live in a way that's in alignment with our soul. And so it's just important for you to really tune in to this deeper discernment within yourself. What's a desire and what's been programmed into me that feels like a desire, but doesn't really truly resonate at the level of my soul. I also often notice that sometimes we don't even actually ask for what we really desire. Like we might get to the point where we know exactly what we desire and it feels really delicious and yummy, but we fail to ask for it, like fail to ask the universe, or we don't maybe ask our partner or our friend for what we really need. Um, because one, maybe there's like this expectation that the universe just knows, or our partner just knows, or, you know, our friend just knows. And so that's why we don't ask or, and there's this fear that if we asked for what we really, really wanted, what we really, really desire deep down that the need or the desire wouldn't be met by either the universe or by our partner or by our friend or whoever. And this fear of the need or the desire not being met is so, so strong is often very, very unconscious. And therefore we just don't ask for it. We hold this desire in our mind, but we don't externally use our voice to ask for what we really want. And, you know, I don't know about you, but I've definitely experienced the disappointment the heartache and hurt, um, of not receiving what I really wanted. 
whether it was from a person or just something that I really wanted in my life, there was a lot of complex feelings in that space. Um, there was like feelings of failure. There's feelings of rejection. Um, there's feelings of anger and sadness, right? All of that was there for me when I didn't receive what I wanted. And often that in and of itself will detract us consciously or unconsciously from from asking for what we really want. And so if we don't ask for what we really want, then it's going to make it really hard for that thing to come into our life. There is so much vulnerability that's involved when we ask for our desires. Most of us, all of us, we don't want to be rejected. And the fear of rejection can feel really difficult to sit with. And if we are perceiving that we're being rejected in some way or we are being rejected, there's a lot of shame that comes up in that space. A lot of difficult emotions, right? Uncomfortable emotions. And so in so many ways, part of the work here is realizing that if you are rejected, if you feel rejected, that you can hold that, you can hold that feeling of rejection and also know that it's not about who you are as a person, right? That you're not unlovable, that, um, it doesn't mean anything bad or wrong about you or that you're a failure, but that it's just a signal that maybe this isn't the right person for you, or it's a signal that, you know, maybe you need to wait to receive what you really want a little bit longer, that there's other things that need to unfold and that they're all for your highest good and that you'll receive exactly what you want to receive when it's time for you to receive it. Um, There's a lot of different ways that we can understand us not receiving something. But where I most often see people going is that we create a story about what it means about us. Yeah. And that's so human. That is so, so human. And also there's an opportunity for us to really invite ourselves into this knowing that we can sit with the uncomfortable parts that come up within us. And that if we're not receiving something, that there's some higher reason for it, that we're able to come back into trust. Yeah. And so this, there is this dance between receiving and trust that happens because inevitably there are going to be moments where like your ego mind really wants to receive something and that in and of itself is not a bad thing, right? That's not neither bad nor good, but the ego part of us wants to receive something and we're goal oriented and we're going for it. And inevitably we're going to get disappointed because not everything arrives on our timeline, right? And so there's going to be these ruptures in trust with the universe or in trust with another person. And we get to rise to that challenge by honoring the contraction that happens in the space, right? By feeling the sting, the burn, the hurt of not receiving, and then working with that And allowing our body to naturally open up again to trust, right? Where it makes sense for us to open up to trust. And a lot of this does really come down to trusting. And that's one of the things I'll say over and over again. The thing that will get you the things that you really want in your life is you continually sinking back to trust, even when you feel like you're being knocked down the more that you can nurture trust within yourself, with the universe, the more that you are going to be able to receive more quickly and effortlessly because the less you're going to get into emotional spirals that take you somewhere completely different, right? Because when we lack trust in what's waiting for us or what's being communicated to us through our intuition, then we're veering off on all these different pathways that take us away from our soul path. But when we trust, when we trust that we are going to receive, then there's a lot less efforting that goes into the path, right? We veer off a lot less. And the veers that we have 
through our journey are absolutely meant to be there because all of them are teaching us deeper trust. They eventually bring us back, right? If we're acting in alignment with our intuition, but building that trust container is really what also helps you build your energetic capacity to receive over a longer period of time. The more that you trust in the space, the more your body is open and willing to receive, right? Because when we're contracted, it means that we're not trusting the process. We're not trusting the fact that everything is coming to us, right? And when we trust, we just lay back and allow ourselves to receive. And I just want to normalize that it's so normal for us not to trust, right? There's nothing wrong with us not trusting. It's more about the process that we take to allow ourselves to sink into deeper trust through some of the contraction that's showing up. So none of this is to say that like you have to trust everything, you have to do all these things and always feel open. This is actually to say that when you are feeling contraction around something or you are feeling all of these emotions that are coming up in regards to receiving that it's actually the opportunity that's being presented for you to receive at a higher level to trust at a deeper level yeah and that there's simply invitations whenever we're contracting I always call it it's an invitation that leads you into the next energetic container of receiving or trusting It's through giving ourselves permission to feel it all that leads us into being able to accept and welcome it all in. A piece that I wanted to also bring into the conversation is what comes up when we ask for support, because that is a very important way that we get to receive. So it's not just like receiving money or you know, receiving things into our life and our business. It's also receiving support is such a huge component of receiving. Um, And it's a very particular kind of energy, right? That's more based on that interconnection that we have with each other. And, you know, on one level, I think it's asking for support from the universe that can be hard in and of itself, Um, asking support from our allies. If you have guides, angels that provide guidance or allies in nature, for instance, right? And then there's the support that we have the opportunity to ask for from our partners or family members, our friends, and oftentimes asking for support from the humans in our life can be so much exponentially harder because we do fear that rejection part. And there is so much beautiful healing that can happen in that space when we ask for support, when we challenge ourselves to ask for support and to be prepared to be met. And also to know that if you're not, you have the capacity to hold that as well. You know, one of the things that I've brought up, I think on several other podcasts is that we heal through relationship. And if we don't put ourselves out there to receive support, then we are simply confirming the fact that we are not supported. And so the more that we are able to ask for support in our relationships, the more we're also going to be able to feel supported by the universe too, right? That these are um, similar energies. And so the more that we build one container, the more that we're going to be able to also trust the other container. And when we feel supported, our body is able to relax so much more into receiving. Our body is so much more trusting. And when our body is relaxed, that's when the energy is able to land within us. And this also goes beyond emotional support, right? Part of it is emotional support. There's also financial support. Like how can we ask for support from the people in our lives? That's a very vulnerable thing and a very hard thing. Um, And also it's a resource that's available to you because oftentimes people do actually want to support you financially um, because they recognize the wonderful work that you're doing or they love you and they want to offer that. And it can be so hard to ask, but there's so much healing that you can receive when you receive support, even financially from 
people who are close to you in your life. And when I mean financial support, you know, that could mean, um, you know, for a prolonged period of time, or maybe that can mean someone helping you with your credit card bill or uh, a bill that you have for a program that you want to be a part of. Like there's so many different ways, right? And actually a past client of mine had a huge healing experience by asking, you know, one of her family members for support in joining a program that I had. And she received so much from that program and started making a lot of money in her business, right? So that there are ways that we can receive support financially, emotionally, and other ways um, that help to heal our relationship with our family, that also help to heal our relationship with receiving from the universe, and that open us to greater blessings, that there is a way that it can be so much in alignment with what our soul is here to bring into the world. Sometimes it's also asking, how can I ask for support in my business, right? Where I pay someone to support me and what would it feel like to receive that kind of support in my business? Um, And how can I open myself up to it? Sometimes we have a lot of constriction in opening that channel up and, there can be a lot of internal pieces that arise as a result of that. So I would just invite you into an inquiry on, you know, if, especially if you're someone who puts out a lot of energy towards other people, you're a caretaker, you're someone who wears multiple hats in your business and life, that a really wonderful question to invite yourself into is where do I need to be supported? And once you determine those areas of support, who can I ask to help support me in this? Is it someone I pay? Is it someone I know that would just want to gift it to me? Do I need to receive it through money and finances or can I receive it through emotional support? How is the support needing to be received? And really tune into the core desire of this, right? Not what you think the other person would agree to, or what you think is more acceptable, quote unquote, for you to ask for, but what would feel really yummy? How would it feel really yummy for you to be supported? In what way? By whom? And how can you challenge yourself and invite yourself to put yourself out there vulnerably and ask the question and be able to know that you will be supported in some way? And that if you're not that it's okay to, you can sit with the difficult emotions that come up in that space. You would be surprised how often we actually cut off our ability to receive and cut off our support by assuming someone wouldn't support us or by assuming that something won't work out and how much of a difference it can make when we believe we are being supported by the people around us. When we believe that we are supported by the universe, it takes us into a whole different energetic container. I also invite you to identify any fears that you have around receiving. What are you afraid would happen if you opened yourself up to receive? If you were to be this woman who unapologetically claims herself, unapologetically claims her desires, what are you afraid other people will think of you? How how are you afraid other people will judge you? Because that comes up a lot as well. Is there a part of you that fears being successful? Um, That is often a fear that comes up a lot. We often think about the fear of failure, but we don't think about the fear of success and all the stuff that brings up. Another really helpful way of getting at some of the blocks that relate to receiving is when you think about giving yourself pleasure, whether that's like in the bedroom or whether that's just indulging, right? Even when I say that word indulge, um, oftentimes guilt and shame can come up. What's your relationship with indulging yourself and giving yourself something that you really desire, but maybe something that you don't necessarily quote unquote need? How do you show up in that space? Do you allow yourself to have you know, long baths, if that's a desire of yours, or do you allow yourself to read for hours on end, if that's something you enjoy doing? And if you don't, why is that? What shows up for you in the space? What are you ashamed of? What do you feel guilty about? And that can be a beautiful entering into addressing some of the blocks that can be present in the space. 
So whenever you identify the blocks, right, just allow yourself to turn towards that part of you that's feeling fear, that's feeling shame, that's feeling guilt, and get to know it, understand where it comes from, understand what it needs in order to feel comfortable with receiving. And then get into the practice of giving to that part of you that has the fear what it really needs. Give it to them in that moment. And then practice opening, practice receiving, practice going from that contraction into a state of openness and teach your body that it's safe to be there, that it's safe for you to receive, that it's safe for you to have desires and that it's okay. You deserve to receive. You deserve to have all that you want and really feel that, really feel that in your body. This is all of the work that I do with women in my individual mentorship, and it's what I also do in my group program. They're just at different levels of support. And so if this is something that you struggle with, if this is something that comes up for you quite a bit and you see how it's impacting your ability to receive what you want in your business, in your life, then I encourage you to reach out to me. You can email me at Anna at AnnaKinkela.com. You can find a contact form on my website at www.AnnaKinkela.com, or you can message me directly on Instagram. And my handle is at the Anna Kinkela. And then we can explore whether it's a good fit for the two of us to work together. Thank you for tuning into today's podcast. Thank you for being here in community with me. And if you loved what you heard on the show today, I would just love to invite you to write a written review on iTunes. It really helps the show become more visible and it helps to let other people know to tune into the show. Thank you again. Have a beautiful week. We'll see you next time.